Hey guys, Dramaside is here with this review of The Hobbit, released in 2003 for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube, Xbox, Game Boy Advance and PC, developed by Inevitable Entertainment and published by Vivendi Universal. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Well, not quite yet. The Hobbit tells the story of young Bilbo Baggins, whose peaceful, carefree life in the Shire is disrupted when he is visited by the wizard Gandalf the Grey, and is co-opted into a dangerous journey to reclaim dwarf treasure from the dragon Smaug. The Hobbit was J.R.R. Tolkien's first venture into Middle-earth that would be the basis for the fantasy epic Lord of the Rings trilogy, in contrast to the EA published Lord of the Rings titles which favoured a more realistic gritty presentation, The Hobbit instead opts for a more colourful and cartoonish look with well animated character models and an expansive colour palette. As a result, Middle-earth looks like an idyllic paradise, particularly the Shire which serves as the game's opening levels. Even little details like water and grass have motion, adding depth to locations. It is an appealing art style with well executed motion video cutscenes and storyboard sequences that convey the story, which unashamedly embraces the fact that The Hobbit is first and foremost a children's story in comparison to the more adult oriented Lord of the Rings. Despite a good amount of detail for Bilbo, the dwarfs and the various enemies you encounter, the game does suffer from a lack of polish, namely the animations that show evidence of collision issues and jerky movements, such as when Bilbo gets stuck on a wall or colliding with an object that continue hurtling off screen. The Hobbit is a platformer that incorporates a number of RPG elements. An introductory level takes place in Bilbo's dreams, bringing you up to speed on the controls, while offering you a preview of what's to come in the game. The gameplay is varied from mundane fetch quests, battles with trolls and trying to sneakily free your dwarvish companions from the elves of Mirkwood Forest. Being a Hobbit, Bilbo is not the strongest character so you have to take care when battling enemies. You start the game with your basic walking stick and rocks, but later gain the sword sting and a certain ring that can turn you invisible. From the hilltops of the Shire to Spiderfield Caves and the encounter with Smog, there is plenty to see and do. The main focus of the gameplay is platforming, but there are puzzles to solve, although these aren't very difficult, often revolving around finding keys in order to unlock a door or trigger a machine to progress forward. The battle mechanic is solid, featuring a lock-on camera with responsive attack and defense buttons, which if you're going to make an adventure game, it's important that you get the battle mechanic sorted out, otherwise this can be a real deal breaker. About halfway through the game, you'll gain possession of the one ring from the identity challenged golem, which can be used to turn Bilbo invisible to stealthily avoid enemies. However, the ring can only be used for a limited amount of time before Bilbo becomes corrupted and the game ends. Despite the true nature of the ring not being revealed until The Lord of the Rings, I thought it was a clever way to incorporate the ring into gameplay and is not just a trinket, as this introduces an element of strategy since you can only use the ring sparingly and it is up to you to decide the best time to use it. The Hobbit offers crisp sound featuring better than average voice acting with dialogue lifted from the book to give personality to these characters. The in-game environments offer just the right level of ambience and sound effects to complement each area. For example, you will hear bats screeching around caves howling wolves and hissing spiders that help to bring the world of Middle-earth to life. The game's soundtrack composed by Rod Abernethy and Dave Adams is excellent, with fully orchestrated melodies mixing softer, lighter tunes in the Shire with more thundering pieces in the later battles, creating a varied number of mood pieces enhancing the characters of the environments, providing an accomplished oral experience. The soundtrack more than holds its own to Howard Shaw's epic affair. Now on to some things I didn't like. The controls can be a problem with collision detection issues, creating some graphical glitches, and can take you out of the game. Furthermore, the camera may decide to throw a fit and angle itself in difficult places, making progression that much harder. At some points, the frame rate, which usually runs at a smooth 30 frames per second, dips, usually in the larger open environments and causes lag. This can be an issue during fighting battles, when enemies can get the jump on you. While the difficulty increases progressively, the levels can be a bit confusing on where to go next, leading me to get lost on a number of occasions. One area that I thought was a missed opportunity was the riddles in the dark sequence with Gollum. It is all handled in a cutscene and then suddenly you have the ring. So much more could have been done with this. A puzzle element could have been introduced with Bilbo having to solve riddles to defeat Gollum and win the ring. It is a shame that it's all over and done with in a video. The Game Boy Advance version is more of a straightforward platformer but includes most of the same features as its console counterpart. In conclusion, while The Hobbit may not be the most original game ever made, relying on formulaic linear play mechanics thrown in with some graphical hiccups, it does a good job of turning Tolkien's well-known fantasy story into a solid action platformer that while lacks in replay value, nonetheless offers an entertaining if brief romp through the fantastical world of Middle-earth. Well that brings us to the end of this review, thanks so much for watching. 
If you liked what you saw, give this video a thumbs up, leave some feedback and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and until next time, peace out guys.